Welcome back to Let's Cook! Today we'll be cooking from Morimoto's Mastering the Art of Japanese Home Cooking. A book that I've made a couple stuff from, but today we're going to be making something I've tried before and yet have not. What's that food? It's donuts! Jelly filled are my favorite! And in order to start our jelly filled donuts, we have to make not that. Some perfect white rice. If there's anyone I trust for white rice, it's the Iron Chef Man guy. So the first step to our perfection of the white rice is to rinse it. Which, if you're lazy like me, you kind of want to skip. But trust me, don't do it. And usually it takes like three or four rinses because what you're looking for is for the rice at the end to not leach any more starch into the water. It's also hard to talk about this running water. So after it's reached that level, give it a stir. And there, you can see it there, like a spooky rice ghosty. Dump that or save it for some reason. I don't really know what to do with rice water. And repeat. I probably should have mentioned, this is one cup and two tablespoons of rice, which is about half of what the recipe calls for, because I'm not that hungry. Rinse number three. Let's do it. There, I drew a three in it. Thru. A thur. No, you see, it's a lot more clear. Let's do four for good luck. As you can see, water's clear. So we are in the clear. And now this has to completely dry before you cook the rice. Once the rice is dry, you add an equal amount of water to a rice cooker or stove pot if you don't have a rice cooker. Or if you're like me and break rice cookers. You know, it's not my fault every time I try to make rice pudding in a rice cooker, it just like destroys the machine. Oh, wait, that sounds like it's exactly my fault. Set to the cook, and then we have to wait for the rice to cook. What joy. While the rice is cooking, we can contemplate our jelly filling. Now, Morimoto's book is sending tomatoes this way. Uh, I was trying to keep the page open with this thing of tomatoes and it didn't work. Forget that happened. So Morimoto's book recommends a couple of things. There's salt grilled salmon that you can break up and put in there. There's leftover chicken teriyaki. Or the recipe that follows says tuna mayo, which is apparently his favorite and consists of very obscure ingredients to the American audience like tuna and Mayonnaise. Although he recommends the Japanese styled mayonnaise, which is a little more flavored, I think because they put in stuff like MSG. But I'm fine with MSG. It's fine with me. BLT. Find out what it means to me. And so it uses one 5 ounce can of tuna. Get that open. You don't have to see me use a can opener, do you? No. Oh. If you want to see some really exciting can opening action, here you go. Thrilling, exciting, exemplary, outstanding, it's gonna fall. So, tuna, two tablespoons of Japanese mayonnaise. <laughs> That's it, I give up. No more cooking show, I'm done. Where fingers fail, knives work, I guess. And I'm just gonna eyeball that, because mayonnaise is messy. That doesn't look like two tablespoons. Bleh. Uh, it reminds me of making tuna salad for my school lunches. I wonder why you're scratching at the door. 
Once the rice has cooled enough that you can handle it, it's assembly time. And I think about half a cup of rice works best per ball. And so what you do is uh, make sure the rice isn't too hot because you're going to burn your hand like I am on camera. Uh, ow. Yep. Too hot. Still too hot. Redo. It's time to assemble our rice balls. And so the first thing you need to do is not the rice, but actually you need to wet your hands. Probably a little better than that. And then dip two fingers in good old fashioned salt. And then rub your hands so that you get a layer of salt on them. Then I think about half a cup of rice makes a good size of rice ball. At least a good size for my hand. And then kind of push it out, get it kind of flat, and make an indentation in the center where you're going to put your lovely little tuna mayo. Like filling pierogies, you don't want too much filling in there, but enough that you know there's there to taste. And then kind of close it up around the filling in order to form kind of a rice ball. But when I think of like, you know, good old fashioned Pokemon donut rice balls, it has to be at least a little triangular. There we go. And now we wrap it in nori. If you want kind of that classic look, you can take a piece of nori like this and just kind of wrap it around like that. Or if you want to do what our lord and recipe writer Masaharu Morimoto says, you take half a sheet and you use that to wrap the rice ball, you know, without that little part in it, but I'm doing a demonstration so it's okay, right? I was never good at this. This is why I do the little nubby part to kind of wrap up the rice ball. And apparently, don't try to undo a rice ball, because it doesn't work, as I'm learning in this video. But, ta-da! And now there's actually something else I wanted to try this video, which is kind of the reason I'm making it. Because I've made normal rice balls before, but I've never made grilled rice balls. Which is what we're going to use the rest of this rice for. So just like before, wet hands, get your hands nice and salty. Pretend you're really upset about something, it just become really salty. And this time, we're just making the triangle, we're not filling this. Try to get it nice and compact according to the recipe. I don't know why I'm still talking like I'm an authority on this, because I've never done this before. So, a nice, dense, that's kind of a triangle. It's also hard to see because the background's white and this is white. You can see it's a triangle. I tried. I'm good at geometry. And then we're going to set these rice balls aside until they are completely cool. So one of the parts that most interested me about this recipe is that the rice balls end up getting like a glaze while they're cooking. And the glaze is made out of mirin, a fourth of a cup, which I have a huge thing of mirin for some reason. And then there's also a fourth of a cup of soy sauce. And then we're going to need a basting brush. I have one of these silly looking ones that has bubbles in it to help hold the liquid. And now over to the quote unquote grill. So the reason I said quote unquote grill is because I don't really know how to use a grill or own a grill and it's not very nice weather out, but I do have a broiler, which is like an upside down grill of mine sources are to be believed. And so I thought I'd try grilling the rice balls in there. So I set them up on a cooling sheet that's been sprayed to try to imitate like grill grates. And the broiler's on its highest setting. So I'm gonna throw them in and hope this wasn't a terrible mistake like everything else I did. So the first cook on the grill version it's supposed to be three to four minutes before you add any of the sauce. 
and now it's yelling at me because I held it open too long. But I'm gonna check it in two, just because I'm not sure how quickly things are gonna end up browning in here. Alright, so it's been three minutes, actually, what the recipe said. And so I'm gonna try doing what the recipe says as I continue to say what the recipe says. And so what the recipe says is to carefully flip these over and then add the sauce. I guess the most careful thing I could do is with a spatula? I don't know. <laughs> and careful was just thrown out the window as I flung it across the cooling rack. Le sauce. I only have one hand for this. So let's see here. Oh, that sounds nice. It's a nice sizzle, rizzle for nizzle, schnizzle. I promise I'll never say something like that again. These are ready to go back in. I'll probably check on them in another minute or two. Two rice balls, both alike in dignity. Here in the fair dining room is where we set our scene. And I'm done with that because it's giving me high school flashbacks. So here's our normal rice ball. And well, you know, it's fine. I've done this before a couple times and I like them. But now for the part that's actually gotten me kind of excited is this lovely Golden Juliet to the normal one's Romeo, I guess, even though I said I wasn't going to do any more Romeo and Juliet lines. Very pretty. So let's find out. Oh, whew. that's actually really nice. Like crunchy paella rice on the outside and still soft on the inside. Let's see if I can get a close up of that for the folks in the cheap seats. It's like really cool. I mean, not literally cool, because it's actually pretty warm from being under the broiler, but this is good stuff. Like, like texturally, it's just very interesting. And the sauce on the outside, like, salted it enough that you don't need any other seasoning for it. So I definitely recommend grilling your donuts. And by donuts, I mean rice balls, because I definitely haven't killed that joke yet. So... What are your favorite fillings for rice balls? Have you ever used a broiler to have a grill before? Tell me in the comments below. And let me know if you try this out, because I think it's definitely worth doing. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna finish my ball. <laughs>